it sounds very clearly to me in, that, that President Obama is calling for an open convention. He's saying we shouldn't coronate Kamala Harris right now. We should have an actual convention. Now, my sources have been telling me that for weeks. Long before Biden stepped down, I told you Obama was pulling the strings here. I told you that Obama wanted Biden out. And I told you that Biden didn't want Kamala Harris to just slide into the seat. He wanted a process. He wanted an open convention. So why is Obama seemingly in the minority here? And what would an open convention look like? And how can you call yourself a champion of democracy if everybody don't get to decide who the president going to be? Anyway, joining me to help make sense of this is somebody who I admire a great deal. Um, somebody who is smart, smarter than me, uh, and certainly knows this information uh, better than me. And so I am joined by Cenk Uger. He is, y'all know him, the Young Turks. He's, he, he's a legend in, in, these, in these media streets. Uh, my friend, thank you for joining me. Help me understand, first of all, uh, why President Obama hasn't said anything in, in the way of an endorsement when the Clintons have, all the power brokers seem to have done that. Why, why, why has he not done it? Yeah. At this point, the ship has probably sailed and it's probably too late. But uh, I think that there were a number of smoke signals that uh, President Obama sent that were not received. Uh, and, and he's not alone in this. And so I'm curious to see how this is going to play out in the long run. So first, um, Barack Obama's top advisor is who? David Axelrod. Uh, by the way, the top advisor to the Clintons is James Carville. They were both out there for about, you know, I was doing it for about a year to 10 months. They were out there for at least six months uh, going, not Biden, not Biden. Okay. And, <laughs> and that was Obama and the Clintons saying, guys, what are you doing? He's definitely going to lose. Can't you read poll numbers? And in my case, it wasn't progressive versus establishment, which was the old battles. I just don't want Donald Trump to win. I, I don't. Uh, I think that what he did was a real coup attempt, and I think I'm one of the few Democrats who apparently thought that election that democracy really was on the line. And so, uh, and but apparently Obama and, and the Clintons agreed with me. So that was the Biden portion. Now, when is, you get to the is, 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 is that as big a deal as it sounds to me that the Clint first of all the Clintons and the Obamas are on the same page on this, but also that Biden and his team are ignoring. The, the, the two most successful political campaigns, Democratic political campaigns, maybe of the second half of the 20th century. Yeah, 100%. Uh, what I what was amazing to me is that mainstream media couldn't see that Axelrod and Carville were speaking for Obama and the Clintons. I mean, if Obama was going to send someone to make that statement, who would it be? Right, Axelrod. It would be David Axelrod, obviously, right? right? And for the Clintons, it would either be Carville or Begala, and they both said it. Uh, so... There's just no question that that's what they were, the message they were trying to send. It's just nobody were, was able to effectively receive it. In fact, I on a show, I said that that's what they were doing. And somebody said to me, oh, that sounds like a conspiracy theory. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> I mean, theory. here's the conspiracy theory is that David Axelrod and Barack Obama don't speak. <laughs> okay, right. so, <laughs> so anyways, but we're past that now. Joe Biden begrudgingly made the right decision, but that's going to be relevant for the Kamala Harris uh, portion of the conversation. So Obama, Pelosi, Schumer, and Jeffries all did not endorse her. And in fact, in the beginning, Biden didn't endorse her. He put out a second statement 30 minutes later after everybody was like, whoa, we're Where's we, Kamala I was, Harris? I was freaking out when I saw him make the first statement, but didn't endorse Kamala. We, I mean, at least black group chat, text mess. Everybody was like, what is he doing? He's about to sink this campaign before before it starts. Do, do you think he was establishing some timing for dignity's sake and for his own kind of space to shine? Or do you think that was a miscalculation that he quickly corrected? So this is where it gets complicated. Uh, so uh, Axios is a story that is very credible and lines up with what I've seen before, uh, which is that the Biden team didn't want it to be Kamala Harris. And uh, part of the reason that he was slow rolling his own exit, 98% of the reason was his gigantic ego. Let's be clear about that. Okay. Sure. But 2% of the reason, whether he's right or wrong, was his concern about Kamala Harris and that she wouldn't be able to, to pull this off. Um, but okay. So, but Biden's at this point, 
I don't think we should put a lot of stock in his judgment, given what's happened. Right, right? he thought he could win. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he was positive, not only that he could win, but that he was the best possible candidate, which was preposterous. He was literally the worst candidate that we had. Again, it's not to beat up on a guy who made the right decision at the end. And let's be fair, Trump never let go of power, and Biden did, belatedly, but okay, good. Credit where credit is due, I'll take it. I'm just setting up the the stage so you know where the players are in terms of how they feel about Kamala Harris. So then you get to Obama and Pelosi and the others uh, also, and and you I emphasize the same exact statement that you did, Mark, uh, from Obama uh, in two different videos. He very clearly said it should be an open process decided at the convention. And so it doesn't get any clearer than that. That means he did not want it to be Kamala Harris right out of the gate. And so I, I'm going to, so first I'll just assume for a second, and then we'll see uh, later maybe if that I was right about this or not, that they might have the same concerns that I have. Well, the first one is benign, which is, hey, we didn't test Biden in this primary and it was a disaster, right? right. And so I think Kamala Harris might prove to be the strongest of the candidates that we have. But I'd like to test it first, and I'd like to vet her a little bit first. And I don't think we did that. I think we should have gone to an open convention. I think she was the favorite and would have won there. And in a sense, she already did win because she, according to the Associated Press, has collected enough delegates now that uh, that she could win yeah, the but, nomination. But opposed. I mean, if, if, if people were asked, do you want Kamala or Newsom? Do you want Kamala or Shapiro, Kamala or Whitmer, Kamala or Kelly? Do they make the same choice? Yeah, I don't know that they d do. Uh, but hey, at the same time, they weren't exactly profiles of courage. You did have a window here to challenge her and you didn't. So, but if you weren't strong enough to challenge her, you probably weren't strong enough to be the candidate. So that tells you something as well. Okay, but bottom line is the second part is not benign. And I, we just don't know if it's right or not. This It's entirely possible that they know something we don't know about Kamala Harris. And the fact mm. that they were all hesitant, especially when everyone there is in the establishment, it's not like it's progressive versus establishment. It's not like they have significant policy disagreements. So right. it makes me worry. It makes me worry that they know something and uh, and that we rushed into this thing uh, before fully considering all of our I, options. You know, I, I, I think it's far simpler than that. I think they just remember that she polled in single digits in the 2020 primary, that, that she couldn't beat Pete Buttigieg or Elizabeth Warren or anybody else, on, on or Bernie or, or, or anybody else, that when voters had a chance to choose her, they overwhelmingly wanted anybody else. And look, that's been Biden in 88, that's been Biden in 92, that's been Biden in, you know, a million times before. But his vice presidency catapulted him. He became Uncle Joe and we loved him as a nation, right? That didn't happen with Kamala Harris for all the reasons. I'm not saying they're all her fault, but at the end of the day, people don't love her. This could just be a thing if they know that people don't like her. If anybody knows it's Hillary Clinton, that if you're, if you're framed as somebody who's not likable, then it's hard to win. It's very gendered, it's very sexist, it's very problematic. But at the end of the day, people vote for certain kinds of people. And I, I, I'm thinking it's really that simple. They just think other people are more likable. Yeah, maybe, maybe, but I see, here's how I view it, Mark. Um, when it's a progressive, Bernie Sanders or whoever else it might be, the establishment is not shy about letting you know what their opinion is, right? So they will say, oh, watch out, radical, he'll lose, right. they'll throw everything. And, and before 2020 started, the campaign started, I said, watch, by the end, they'll call Bernie Sanders anti-Semitic. Uh, and they did, <laughs> right? So they'll they'll throw the kitchen sink at you if they don't uh, agree with you. Uh, it really, it's not really policy as much as do you take corporate cash or don't you take corporate cash? Right. And if you don't, if you don't take corporate cash, they're going to hit you with everything they got. This is not a situation like that. They're all in the same camp. They're all in the same establishment uh, camp. Their policies are nearly identical. So there's no reason for Obama, uh, Biden, Clintons, et cetera, to, or not the Clintons because they came out right away for her, but Pelosi, Schumer, et cetera, for them to have concerns about Kamala Harris. That's why I'm worried that it's something else, uh, that it's something about her, particular to her. Uh, and, and, and I've talked to some people that are very 
core to the Biden administration without giving away who it is. Uh, and when I challenged whether Biden could uh, prosecute this campaign, they were adamant that he could. They were wrong, but they were adamant. When I got to Kamala Harris, they were silent. And I thought that silence was telling. And so let's hope I'm wrong about that. And and I'm not saying that that's the case. I'm just, I just don't yeah. know. I see troubling signs and I'm well, a little well, worried. I'll tell you one it. thing. If there's a person that you want to face when you have a, a, a sketchy background, it's Donald Trump. I mean, how bad, how sketchy does your background have to be to make voters say she's too shady or she's too dishonest? It would be like, it's, it's, it's like if someone had a, sex assault allegation or a corruption allegation right now going against Donald Trump. You'd be like, yeah, that just makes it, that just makes him even again, right? I mean, whatever it is, it would have to be pretty, pretty problematic. Um, do you think ultimately Obama comes around and, 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 the, and the rest of the power brokers come around or does he just remain silent at this point? Oh, no, no, that's imminent. Um, look, I, I don't know anyone that wanted an open convention more than I did, but if the Associated Press is right and she already has uh, a majority of the delegates, it's yeah. already over. And in which case, Obama wouldn't want those questions that I just asked lingering around for other Fair people enough. to figure out. So Pelosi uh, endorsed her this afternoon, and uh, Schumer and Jeffries are almost certainly next, probably tomorrow morning, and then Obama will close the deal probably some point tomorrow.